بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والا وبعد So we begin today then with the dirasa itself of Bulugh al-Maram after months uh, of dealing with the muqaddimat in usul al-fiqh and in mustalah al-hadith and qawaid fiqhiyya and maqasid shari'iyya We begin bi in today's session with the study of the book itself and of course the dirasa and our study will revolve around the sharh of Sheikh Abdullah Bassam, Tawdih Al-Ahkam. Uh, and so what we'll do in this session then we'll begin first and foremost with uh, a look at the tarjama of the biography, a brief biography of Al-Imam Hafiz uh, and then the muqaddima, the introduction to his book uh, and then we'll get at least into bi'idhanillah the first hadith. The author's biography the full name of the famous Imam Al-Hafidh Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani Asqalani is Abu Fadl Shihab al-Din Ahmed Ibn Ali Ibn Muhammad Ibn Muhammad Ibn Ahmed Al-Kinani Al-Shafi'i Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani was born on the 10th of Sha'ban 773 Hijri in Egypt where he grew up also. He memorized the Quran at the age of nine years. He also memorized Al-Hawi, 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 the book Mukhtasar of Ibn Hajib and other books. He traveled to Mecca and listened to the teaching of its ulama. He admired the knowledge of hadith and began to acquire it from the great sheikhs in Hijaz, Sham, Egypt and stayed with Zayn al-Iraqi for 10 years. He also studied under al Balqini, Ibn Mulaqin, and others. Many eminent sheikhs of his time approved of his knowledge and allowed him to give religious verdicts. He had learned the two sources. Uh, as far as Hafid is concerned then, uh, of course he is the Imam Al-Allam Al-Hafid Abu Al-Fadl Ahmad Ibn Ali Ibn Muhammad Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani. Uh, and Asqalani is a nisbah uh, and it is his attribution uh, to uh, his tribe and it is similarly uh, a region since Sheikh uh, Ahmed, uh, Sheikh Abdullah he mentions here Medina Tun Min A'mal Palestine Qurb Gaza that is uh, it is a region in the place or in the area of Palestine uh, which indicates that his uh, origins return and stem back to that region. Uh, and so he was born in Egypt uh, and he uh, was born in the year 773. After he, or not long after he was born, his mother passed away at the age of three and approximately a year or so later his father passed away. Uh, and so he was uh, an orphan from a relatively early age. After he became an orphan, uh, he uh, was taken or he took to the memorization of the Qur'an. Since some mentioned that his death, the death of his, his father was later than a year later, that is mentioned in some of the uh, statements of Ahlul Ilm, while others hold that he uh, passed away, his father passed away a number of years later. Uh, but from the age of five, he began and he, he took to memorizing the Qur'an and he memorized the Qur'an by the time he was nine years old. And it was said that his memory was ajeeb, uh, in that he memorized the Qur'an uh, in totality early, in a short period of time. Uh, but his muraja'ah and him memorizing and learning uh, modes of recitation and what have you uh, took a, a, a slightly longer period. But by the time he was 12 years old, he led Salah, he led Qiyam in the Haram al-Makki at the age of 12. Naam, in Makkah. Naam. He, he had learned the two sources from Al-Izz ibn Jama'a and the language from Al-Majd al-Fayru Zabadi. Al-Izz al ibn Jama'a was his uh, sheikh was one of his uh, shuyukh. He had a number of shuyukh from the people of knowledge of his time. At the head of them, the likes of Imam Ibn Mulaqin, who was from 
uh, his shuyukh uh, and who taught him hadith and other than that. Similarly, he had from his teachers the likes of Ibn Hisham, the great alim of al al Arabiya. Uh, Ibn Hisham was from the shuyukh of Al-Imam Hafiz ibn Hajar. From them and from possibly the one that had the greatest effect upon him in terms of him turning towards the uloom al hadithiya and the sciences of hadith is Al-Imam Al-Iraqi. Al-Imam Al-Iraqi was likewise from the shuyukh and the teachers of Hafiz ibn Hajar. Likewise in Lugha, Al-Imam Fayruz Abadi. The Arabic from Al Amari, literature and poetry from Al Badr Al Mushtaki, and writing from a group of professors. He also recited some parts of the Quran in all seven styles of recitation before Tanukhi. He occupied himself with promotion of knowledge of hadith, so he dwelt in its study, teaching, writing, and giving fat- fatwa. He also taught tafsir, hadith, fiqh, and preached at many places like Al-Azhar, Jami', Amr, and others. Uh, and it is said that he traveled to over 50 cities, from the cities that had in them the people of knowledge and ilm, that he traveled to over 50 cities in the pursuit of ilm. Uh, and of course, in terms of the regions that he traveled to, he traveled to the Haramain, to the region of Hijaz, the region of Dimashq, Sham, uh, he traveled, and of course he took from the scholars of his region in Egypt, in, 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 in Masr. He traveled likewise to Yemen, he took from the ulama of Yemen. Uh, and so he, in terms of al-rihla, and traveling for the, sake, for the purpose of seeking knowledge, which was one of the great characteristics of the people of Ilm of the past, then uh, he followed suit uh, and traveled, ikhwan, to many regions, seeking the knowledge, ikhwan, of the deen of Allah, particularly Ilm al-Hadith, now. He also dictated to his students from his memory. Many highly educated people and distinguished scholars traveled to him to acquire from his vast knowledge. Ibn Hajar authored more, more than 150 books, most of them being in the studies of, of Hadith, which flourished during his lifetime, and the kings and princes exchanged them as gifts. Many of his students from the Imam al-Sakhawi would mention that he would narrate uh, he would have jalasat of imla and he would narrate riwayat يعني, for lengthy periods of time narrations from his hivr from his memory uh, and on uh, the basis of his hivr and him being well known for his memory and memorization he was given the laqab al-hafidh even though with ahl al-hadith the huffaz or the era of the huffaz uh, ended uh, a number of years prior to that and in fact centuries before uh, and so Hafiz ibn Hajr, though he was mutaakhir, though he was born at a later period, uh, he was resemblant to the earlier scholars of hadith in terms of memorization, precision, uh, and many of the sciences related to seeking knowledge. It was said similarly that he was an extremely fast reader to the extent that he read Sahih Muslim in two days. <laughs> Sahih Muslim in two days now. His, most, his book most worthy of mentioning is Fathul Bari, the commentary of Sahih Bukhari, which he started in the beginning of 817 Hijri, after finishing its introductory part in 813 Hijri, and completed the whole commentary in Rajab 842 Hijri. After the completion of the commentary, he had a gathering attended by the Muslim dignitaries and spent 500, 500 dinar on it. Then some kings requested it and paid 300 dinar. Ibn Hajar became the Qadi of Egypt and then Sham and was also added to, to his, and, and then Sham was also added to his jurisdiction which he held for more than 21 years. Which was one of the positions that he held that he eventually became a Qadi and a, and a Mufti uh, as he was similarly given to al khitaba that is he was the Khatib of a number of the major masajid uh, in Egypt, the Jami' al-Azhar. For example, he was the khatib in the Jami' al-Azhar. Similarly, the Jami' of Amr ibn al-As in Qahira in Egypt. He was the khatib and the one that was given or that gave sermon uh, within those masajid. Uh, 
in terms of his authorships, then in, indeed there are many, numbering more than 250 authorships, uh, and not Ikhwan, small books, large works, large works. Anyone who has seen, for example, Fath al-Bari will know that it is numerous in terms of its volume, uh, the likes of Tahdib al-Tahdib, the work that he did yani in, around the affair of Rijal and servicing the book of uh, Al-Hafidh uh, al-Mizzi, Tahdib al-Kamal, Al-Isaba fi Tamiz al-Sahaba, Kutub, Ikhwan, Kutub, indicating his vast knowledge in Hadith and Rijal uh, and various other sciences now. He was against holding the office of, of the Qadi at first until the Sultan assigned, him, assigned to him a special case. Then he accepted to represent Al-Balqini when he begged him very much to preside for him as Qadi. Then he presided for others until he was assigned to the office of Chief Qadi on the 12th of Muharram, 827 Hijri. He then left but had to take the office of the Chief Qadi seven times until he left it finally in 852 Hijri, which is the year in which he died. As concerns his personality... And so he continued to be a Qadi up until the time that he passed away. No. As concerning his personality, Al-Asqalani was humble, tolerant, patient and enduring. He was also described as being steadfast, prudent, aesthetic, selfless, generous, charitable and a person praying and fasting voluntarily. And his students would mention that concerning him, that he would stand with them, a person would ask questions and he would remain with them until they finished asking. And he would ask about his students, Imam al-Sakhawi mentioned that there was not a day that passed except that he used to ask about, ask my father about me. To the extent that my father loved me more because of him asking. <laughs> no. On the other hand, he was said to be used to making light jokes and telling of humorous anecdotes. He also had good manners in dealing with all, uh, all the imams of the earlier generations and later generations and with all those who sat with him, whether old or young. Ibn Hajr died after the Isha prayer on Saturday, the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, 852. May Allah reward him generously.